couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another full fingerstyle arrangement lesson right here on Lickin' Riff, and this time it's gonna be a spectacular lesson because we're gonna learn my fingerstyle arrangement of Sultans of Swing. This is a Christmas special, Christmas 2015. I promised you a grandiose lesson, and this is gonna be one. So first I'm gonna play you my arrangement. It's full. It's got all three solos, the beginning, the ending, and the middle solo, plus three full verses with lyrics, chords, and Mark Knopfler's amazing licks. First I'm gonna play you the arrangement so you can see and hear how it goes and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick with tabs right here on the screen. Take a deep breath, get your fingers ready because this is, this is going to be a lot of work, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. So it goes like this, enjoy.
get to work. Put on B minor. Okay, play strings two, three, four, and five. Then you rake the strings. You can rake them with one finger, you can do an open fan movement. Okay, or it really doesn't matter which, it's just for effect. And then you start the rhythm. Now the basic rhythm here is always bass, chord, hit, chord. Bass, chord, hit, chord. Bass, chord, hit, chord. Now you can also strum the strings when you hit. Right? So that's your rhythm and you fill it in every time you have free space. Now, you start with this. Okay? After the rake, you play the chord and then you start the rhythm. Okay, so chord, rake, chord, bass, chord, hit, chord, bass, chord, hit, chord. Okay? Play the rake, then the chord, then you start the rhythm. Okay? Then your first lick is this. Okay? We're gonna break it down and just play the licks, then I'm gonna play it together with everything. Just know that with everything you play, you can harmonize with the rest of the chord. So, it's two on the third string, four on the fourth, and then again. Then it's two hammer on to four on the third string. Okay, so it's... Um That's with the rest of the accompaniment. Now, I assume that you're um, qualified enough in finger style to know where to add the chords and the bass because if we're gonna discuss putting the bass notes and the rest of the chords and whatever we need to pick at every given moment, we're never gonna see the end of this. This lesson will take 20 hours. So I'm just gonna tell you which chord to pick if you need to pick specific strings, I'm gonna tell you which strings to pick, and uh, the rest of the time we're gonna talk about the licks themselves, okay? We're gonna talk about the licks and chord changes. So, that's the first lick. Okay, still in B minor. Then, still in B minor, it's this. Okay, it's a hammer on from two to four on the fourth string, and then, four on the third. Now you can also vibrate it okay, using your pinky, but a very, very slight vibration so you don't vibrate the whole chord. And then, this is all inside the chord. It's B minor, strings four, two, three. Okay, big, uh, Mark Knopfler is very, very big on arpeggios. Then another arpeggio. Okay, strings three, two, one. Then your pinky goes to five, on the E string, then you take it off, and then you play strings one and two, still on B minor, okay? All of it was in B minor, just the pinky on five, four, just a moment there. So again, and then two hammer on to three, pull off to two on the second string, and then four on the third string. And that's the intro solo. So we're done with the very first part. So again. Two, four, two, four, two, four. You fill in the rhythm. And then. Then the chord. Then again the chord. Five on the E string. Still the chord. Then a hammer on pull off on the second string using your second finger. That's the very first part, the intro. So, congratulations to you. You started playing the arrangement of Sultans of Swing. Now, let's discuss the verse a little bit before we start playing it. The way we're gonna learn this is this. Um, all three verses are the same. I condensed it into three verses instead of six verses because then the arrangement would have been boring uh, because it's very, very repetitive. So um, it's three verses. All three verses are the same, the same chord progression and the same melodies. 
Now we're gonna learn the first verse in full and then uh, we're just gonna change the licks. We're gonna play the same verse but where there is a different lick to play, I'm gonna show you the lick and then we're gonna put it all together. So we're gonna do it slowly and methodically, okay? So have patience. Right, so you start with B minor and the lyrics are simply two on the E string so you can play it with the chord. Then it's A and G, and all of it is with an open E string, so it goes like this. Okay, so you put on A, you play it, and then you change to G6. You put on the G chord head, you put three on the second string and the open E string, and you play the E string first, and then three on the second string, you can harmonize it with the third string, of course, it's in the chord, so it's... And then you put on F sharp and you play strings one and three. Okay, that's your lyrics. So it's B minor. A, G, F sharp. Okay, then you have the very first verse lick, which is this. Okay, got it back to B minor. So you put on uh, fingers two and three on the second fret on the second and sixth strings. So you get this. Now your first finger and the pinky play one hammer on to three on the third string and you harmonize with two on the second string. Okay, this. Now um, to some of you this shape may look familiar because if you take it up a fret then it's a pretty useful shape for G and it's used in a lot of finger style arrangements. So you may have already played it. Just down on F sharp is a bit weird. Okay, but that's the solution I found. So you do it and then you pull it off. Okay, the pinky back from three to one on the third string. Then you take your third finger, that's very important, and you slide it from two to four on the fourth string, and then you put on B minor again. So that's why you use your third finger, you prepare for the next chord. Okay, from two to four on the fourth, and you put on B minor, and you play the bass note with four on the third string, which is your next note of the lick, so. Okay, third, finger. That's the key to this lick. And then you do the same uh, verse line. Okay, but you finish with the E string on F sharp, so you play two on the E string instead of strings one and then three. That's the only variation. You finish like this, the first line, you finish with the E string on two on the second line. Then you play something like this. Okay, so it's F sharp. You play strings. Three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two. And then on the first string, two, three, two, using your third finger. Now keep your second finger on three on the third string to keep the major chord sound. So it's... Um, you don't have to follow the arpeggios you can just play the chord and then finish with this that's a real important lick here two three two on the E string uh, other than that it's your choice what to do here so um and then two zero on the E string then D then two two then five five Okay, so put on five, three, two, and then it's D sus four, D, okay, three, two on the E string, then it's A, you start with the open E string, you put on A in the meantime, and then you play the A bass, then you play strings three and four, both on two, so you get this. And then you play the bass again, uh, that's the place in the rhythm and you change to this you bar the second fret for a and The lick here is this Into G now 
you can do it like this. Yeah, like I did in the uh, example, in the demonstration at the beginning. It doesn't really matter whether you do one or the other as long as you play the lick. Um, it's the barred A, and you play strings 2, 3, and 4 twice. Now you let go of the chord, you let go of the pressing of the chord uh, to get the staccato sound. You don't want... You want this. Okay? So just stop pressing. It's that simple. And then you put on um, 3 and 4 on strings 2 and 4. You play strings 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so it's three, two, and four. Okay, that's a part of the D chord here. It uh, doesn't really matter, uh, just, um, you know, a bit of theory. And um, you either play A this, you play it twice and then A again, or you alternate between the D and A twice. Okay, it's your choice. Then the open second, third, and fourth uh, strings into G. Okay, so you have time to change the chord. Um, and you keep on playing the G chord until you need the next line, which is uh, 0, 3, 3 on the second string. And then 0, 0, 3, and then 3 again, but inside B minor. So put on the second finger there, and you have time to put on the chord. Not a lot of time, but time. So... Got it? Make the change between three and three. So um, then you have this. So you hammer on two to four on the fourth uh, string. Then it's the chord. It's strings uh, three, four, two, three. Okay? So hammer on on the fourth. Then three, four, two, three. Okay? Then you have this. Now, you can start with this G, no problem with that, but just for um, sound variation purposes, I play uh, the open 2nd, 3rd, and 4th strings with the G bass. And then when I need to slide from G to A, I put on the bar shape and I play strings 3, 4, 5, and 6 and slide it. And then play A, again, same strings, 3 to 6. And then, um, well, it's the first verse, so let's stop here, um, and you play this. Okay, a slide from 7 to 9 on the bass, then 7 hammer on to 9 on the A string, and then 7 on the D string. And you start another verse. So let's go over the first verse, B minor. sharp. Then this shape. Slide back to B minor. Same line. Then only the E string in F sharp. Okay, 2-3-2. Two, two. Then 2-0 two, into D. D. 2-2-5-5-5-3-2. Two, two, five, 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 Open E string into A. Change to the bar, and then D, A, D, A, G, 0, 3, 3, 0, 3, 3, back to B minor. Then G, 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 A, okay, the last G is bar, because you have to slide it. So, or... But can you hear the sound difference? There's a slight sound difference and it just makes for variation. So uh, then you have to play this and you start another verse. So we already know the lines. Let's just discuss the uh, licks. So first line. Now um, the first lick here is almost the same as the first one, just with a different ending note. Instead of this, you play this. Okay? Now, um, this is 
Granted, not the original order of the song, but this is an arrangement. So um, I built the arrangement licks um, in a sort of a cascading uh, logic kind of way. So it, it is interesting and not boring and repetitive. So it builds up. So you end up on three on the second string. So you do everything the same. You slide with the third finger, you put on B minor, and instead of the third string, you play the second string. Okay? That's all there is to it on the first leg. Then, second line. Okay, and then it's this. Okay, so it's all the way to F sharp. Then you play this. Strings, three, two, one, two, okay? First string you play two five two, and then you play the open E string. Now, if you want to create an interesting sound because it's just for a moment, you can play strings one two and three, and then you get a, a, a seventh at eleven sort of chord here. Okay, it's F sharp just uh, without the bar. Just make sure you leave the bass note on. Um, so open first and second strings uh, with uh, three on the third. It's only for a moment there, so you can do it. It's not a mistake. And uh, then you play this. Okay, it's zero two zero two hammer on pull off hammer on pull off on the E string, and then D. Same line. Same lick. Continues exactly the same. Okay, and then it changes. So let's just repeat the F sharp line. Strings three, two, one, two, one, five, two on the E string. Open E string. You can harmonize with the chord because it's for a moment, and then and this also creates a bit of tension because you stop playing the chord in the accompaniment for a second, and then come back in D, uh, which is already a strong spot. So. Um, Also gives you a bit of uh, mental rest there for a moment, uh, which is desperately needed, especially if you play it from start to finish. So um, then, when you get to the last B minor, you play this. Okay, you bar the seventh fret. You you can put on the chord, but you don't have to. You can play strings one, two, three, and six. Just make sure you're not playing strings four and five. You play uh, strings one and two, then you put on ten on the second string, and you play ten seven on the second string, harmonized by the third string. Okay, that's it. So that's the lick. So um, okay, and you can also slide. You can play the slide as you move to the chord. Slide the bar. So. Um, the effect that you want to create. Try it without the slide, try it with the slide, see how you like it. Um, and then of course you have... And then you play this. Okay, It's A, barred on 5, as you can clearly see, and you play strings um, 3, 3, 2, 4. Okay, it's the lyrics again. Then you go back to the bar G and you play this. Okay? It's strings uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then it's strings 2, 3, 4, and 6. Okay? And then it's strings 3 to 6 again with the slide to A, because then you get this. Okay, that extra note there. And then it's this. It's 5-5 five, five on the second string, and then you change to this A, just for convenience purposes. 5-6-7 uh, on strings 2, 3, and 4, and the open A string, you have the pinky open. So you play the whole chord, and you hammer on 5-7 to seven on the second string. Okay, then 
5 on the second string again, you can harmonize with the chord. And then 5 on the second string again. Then you have the, um, how do we call it, the interim solo. Okay, it's strings 2 and then 3 and 4 in B minor. So before we play the interim solo, let's um, repeat the second verse. So, okay, and then again, but ending on three on the second string. And then is this. Into D. All the same. Slide to seven. Then. Then strings three, three, two, four. Then this with the second string in between. Then five, five, change to this, hammer on from five to seven on the second string. Five again. Then it's B minor. Okay, strings two and then three and four. Then you have the interim solo, the famous um, Sultans of Swing. Transition. Okay, it's simply B minor, A, and G, but you do it like this B minor, then you take the chord off but leave the bar on, play strings two, three, and four, then the open second, third, and fourth strings, and you add the G bass at the end there, don't forget it. Okay, play the bass, then it's G to A. Slide the bass note. Okay, and then D and then A. And when you slide it, the fun thing about it is if you let go above the 12th fret, you get a uh, natural harmonics. So let me try to see if I can deliberately produce it. Hear it? Still ringing. So you get a kind of a transitional effect, an added effect. So uh, you don't really have to do it, but if it produces itself by mistake, so... Okay, could you hear it? It still goes on. It's this note. So, um, D, A, and then this again. Okay, uh, B minor, A, G, 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 A, A, and then this. You already played this. It's 7-9, uh, 7-9 seven, nine, seven, nine on strings E and A, then 7 on the D string. Then comes the first solo. So uh, let's um, shake our hands if we need to. I know I do. And um, start learning it. Whew, okay, so um, it starts with this. B minor. Second fret on the E string. That's the first line. Then it's two, two, two pull off to zero, and with the pull off you play the A bass. And then it's this. It's three hammer on to five, and then three again on the second string. When you play the second three, you play the G bass with it. Then you do the same thing with two and three on the second string with F sharp. Then the next line is this. So you're still here, and you build an F shape arpeggio. It's four on the fourth, three on the third, two on the second, uh, two on the first, six on the E string. That's when you let go of this, okay? Because you keep playing the bass. Okay? Then you put on this. It's um. 9, 9, and 10 on strings 5, 3, and 1, okay? 10 on the 1st, 9 and 9 on the 3rd and 5th. This, or this, is F7. It's the B7 shape up here, but the uh, solo note is this. So you play the chord with the note. That's the logic behind this peculiar shape. And then, 
9 on the E string, then you bar 4 B minor, and you play strings 1, 2, 3, and the 4th on 9. It's inside the chord, you have time to build it. So, then it's 7, 10 on the 2nd string, and with 10 you play the A bass. Okay, so it's A again. Then you go back here for G, you play Okay, three hammer on to five three on the E string with the G bass with the second three. It's the same move as this, but only on the E string. Okay, but this time there's no hammer on on F sharp. You just play two on the E string. So it's G, two on the E string, F sharp. Then you can play the chord if you want. Two, two, three on strings one, two, and three because you have just a little bit of space to fill, and then you have this D. Okay, so the shape is this, it's D. It's five, seven, seven on strings one, two, and three. You slide into it with your second and third fingers, and you play uh, the D bass note with it, and five on the first string, seven on the second string, and then you take fingers two and three to ten on the first and second fingers. I know this is confusing, but follow the tab and it'll all be clear. I'm just showing you the right fingering. So, and then, and you play ten on the first, ten on the second. Then, using your pinky, slide down from eleven to nine on the third string. Okay? Um, you're still on D. So, Okay, so along with the slide, you play the D bass again, uh, 11 to 9, then it's 7-7 seven, seven on the third string, then D again, so 5 and 7, 10, 11, 9, 7, one last time. It's an A arpeggio. Okay, it's this A. Okay, here, C shape. So you play the A bass, of course, here, and you have this. 10 9 on the E string. 10 on the second string. 9 11 9 on the third string. And then 10 10 on the second string. Pretty straightforward here. And then you have this, um, this G, if you've been following my lessons, you know I use this shape a lot, 3 on the bass, 7 on the E string, and you have this, okay, you play 7 on the E string, you can play it with the whole chord, then you do this, okay, it's 7 slide to 5, 3, and then 7 again, it's all on G, so uncomfortable but there's nothing you can do about it. That's the best option I could find. The other option is to use the open G string as your bass note, but it really doesn't fit. It kind of ruins the whole mood um, because you can't play a chord with it. Okay, and for those of you who go, but you can use the G bass note on the A string, it's the same note. If you do this, it's the same note. So, there's no going around it. Okay, uncomfortable, but it's only for a moment. And then it's this. It's the bar on 7 again for B minor. You play the second string first. Then you play the bass with 10 pull off to 7 on the E string. You can play the whole chord. Then it's the second string, the first string, and then you kind of pick from the third, second, and first strength. Okay, like this. So, then, just pentatonic, 10, seven on the second string, nine, seven on the third. So the whole B minor line. Then you get this, G on the bass, and you play this. 
mm-hmm. right? It's G to A. And you play strength. Four, three, two. Okay? And you play the bass with the third string. Then you pull off three to zero on the second string. You bar for A and you play strength three, four, and five. Then is this. You again you pick strum the chord. Strength four three two. Then it's you're still barring A. It's um, three hammer on to five. Three, two hammer on to three, five. Okay? So And then this again. Then you play this. Okay? The ending lick of this solo, the middle solo. So, um, and you play on A. You play strings four, three. Then on the third string, you play four, two. Then you slide four to six. You play A with it, okay? That's the spot uh, you're in um, rhythm-wise. Then it's five on the second string. Then you slide back from six to four on the third. Then it's two hammer on to four on the third string, okay? Pinky on four. And you have time to change the chord because you play four again. And you put on the chord. You play the B bass. And you start this again. Okay, so uh, let's go over that last lick again and then we'll go over the whole solo. So, um, pinky, and then you play this. Okay, the entrance solo. So, the whole first solo, B minor, A, G, F sharp, arpeggio, and then this strange shape, B minor, A, G, F sharp. You just play the chord any way you want, then D. I'm playing it slowly, so you can uh, hear when I'm adding the bass notes. Then A. G. B minor. G. A. G. A. And then you start the um, third verse. The third verse has a lot of different licks. So you start with the first line. And then it's this. So it's F sharp, two on the E string, you can play it with the chord, then stretch your pinky to six on the E string, try to keep the chord going, okay, and then, and you play six, six, then it's this shape, okay, nine, nine, and nine, and strings one, three, and five, I showed you the logic before, it's B7 up to F sharp seven, so you just play it. And then B minor barred on seven again. Okay, so it's seven seven on the E string. The second time, the chord starts again. And this time, uh, you have the melody of the lyrics on the second string. And then you go back to A and G, just as usual. So again, the F sharp. Okay, you 
could just play the E string once and keep playing the second, third, and fourth, or the second and third strings for the layers. Now, the second uh, F sharp lick is this. Okay? You take the bar off and now you deliberately play the F sharp 7 and 11 chord. Open first and second strings, all the rest are F sharp. And this time you rake it, and this time it's uh, preferable to rake it with the open fan movement, either like this or like this, any way you want. Just, uh, just rake it. So you can also do this, down, up, down. Whatever fits your style, okay? Uh, I don't tell you what to do, I only show you my arrangement. So, that's the second F sharp play. And then you have D. Then you have this. Okay? It's preferable to start it with the second finger. Um, on the third string, you slide from four to six. You then play five slide to three on the second string, but you have the third uh, string ringing, so you get this. And you get both notes. You can also pick them using your finger. Okay, just hit both. And then the third string on four. Then all of this was on A, by the way, so. Then you play both strings on three and four. Okay, second string on three, uh, third on fourth. Three times. The third time you add five on the fourth for an F shape, but this is a G chord. Okay, if you play this, you have the same notes. So. Okay, this turns it into G. So, okay, now I know this is a bit confusing, so let's go over it again. A, second finger on the third string, then the whole chord, and then the G bass using your thumb. Or you can change into a bar chord. Okay, but kind of ruins the flow of it for me, but it's doable. Both sound fine. And then, um, yeah, it's just uh, this shape or this shape, G chord, and it's uh, the, the lyrics are strings uh, 3 3 2, 3 3 2 2. Um, but the last uh, three on the second string, the last D note is in B minor. So again, you make the move. Okay, between both D notes. But then, immediately, immediately, you have no waiting time here, you start this. Okay, this line. It's um, two hammer on to four on the fourth. Okay, and then strings three, four. Then three pull off to two on the second string. Then four, four on the third. It's again, all of it is in B minor, but you have to be really accurate. So, you just have time to play this for a 16th note and then start the lick. So, and then you have this. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. We've learned all this before, so... Final solo. You start with this. B minor. Of course. But this time you have no waiting time whatsoever because it's this. Okay, it's all B minor, but with a bass change. B, A, G. Now, it sounds good because B minor, and then A, we're playing the open E string, and if we're playing the second string to harmonize it, it's 
A sus4 so it works and then B minor over G is G major 7 so it still works and this is why um, I chose to keep the B minor on so B minor okay two on the E string is the melody open A bass with the open E string okay so you can harmonize it with the second string you can also harmonize it with the third okay it just sounds too embellished so second string here suffices then second string first string then G bass with second string third string okay you can also harmonize the third with the fourth okay to get the major seven sound so then strings two and one again on three and zero and then it's uh, B minor, it's this, rhythm-wise. Two on the E string, bass, open E string. And then it's this. Okay, for A. So, um, three hammer on to five, pull off to three. Okay, and with the pull off, you play the A bass. Then two, three, two on the same string. Then two, four, two on the third. Then on the fourth. Then zero, two, zero on the fourth. Then on the fifth. Then the B bass for B minor again. Okay, and you can play the chord once. Okay, and then you have this. Wait, wait, let's play this again. bass at the end chord and then this okay it's the a bass with two pull off to zero on the e string then strings you're still with the b minor shape on um strings two one two three and then your thumb for the g bass or your first finger whichever is comfortable for you so b a G and then it's A with this okay it's um, hammer on pull off on the E string 0 to 0 with A then 2 on the second string and 5 5 on the E string and you can play 2 on the second string with it you can also bar the second fret for the fuller A chord but there's no need because it's a fast lick okay and when you play five you actually head and strum that's the spot in the um, the rhythm pattern so okay and you play it four times then is this bar 7 for B minor you play 7 hammer on to 9 on the third string then right away the second string on 7 the first string on 7 and then 10 pull off to 7 on the second string and then uh, 9 on the third and then it's um, 10 pull off to 9 pull off to 7 on the third string and then it's seven hammer on to nine on the fourth. Then seven and seven on strings three and then two. And then it's nine on the third string with A. I know, I know, it's confusing, but let's follow it again. You block strings one, two, three, and four. You use the second finger to play uh, seven on the second string, and you do this. Okay? Strings four, three, two. And with the second string, you play the A string. You can also do this. 
Okay, you can do a triplet. And then press the second string. Um, I'm just mentioning this because that's what I did in the demonstration. It wasn't on purpose, it just, that's the way it flowed. Um, but the original line is this. Okay, um, muted fourth, muted third, seven on the second. Okay, and then you do the same thing with eight on the second string, so it's seven and then eight, both of them with the A bass. And then you uh, play the fourth and third again, muted. Then, okay, with A, you slide from eight to 10 on the second string, then play nine on the E string. Then you slide back from 10 to eight on the second string, and you play seven on the E string. Then the moment uh, most of you have probably been waiting for this, you bar the seventh fret and you play this. Okay. It's not easy to do it fast. As you saw, I didn't play it perfectly in the demonstration, but with more practice, it's doable. I just wanted to make sure I have this lesson in time for Christmas. So that part needed a bit more practice. I admit it, nobody's perfect. So um, you bar seven for B minor. The lick is this. 10 pull off to seven on the E string. Seven on the second, seven on the first. And repeat. Now, the method of doing this with picking it is this. Bass with 10. And then 10 with the strum. And then you repeat. Got it? Okay. Not easy, but very, very doable. Trust me, I've taught you things that are way harder than this. This is just not easy to pull off when played fast, that's all. And then you do the same thing, the same picking pattern with, okay, 12, pull off to nine on the E string, eight on the second string, and the A bass. And then you play the first line of the solo again. And then I finish it with this, the B minor A G, famous Sultan of Swing line. And then I let my fingers and my hands and my wrists and my arms and myself rest for a week. Ha! <sighs> Finally, we're done with the lesson. So, um, before you go practice this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I don't know what you're waiting for. I've got tons of lessons just like this one on the channel for free. Everything is for free. The tab is also for free. It's The link is in the description below. Go get yourself the tab. It's also for free. Everything on Like and Ref is for free. But if you want to give something back anyway, there's a large blue donation button right above the tabs on the website. You can't miss it. It's large. It's oval. It's blue. It says donate. And everything goes right back into Like and Ref, into making you these lessons. I try my best to make the, the best lessons possible and it's only getting better because um, you've been very, very kind and you're still very kind and all donations go to making time to work on these lessons, on filming them, editing them, uploading them, the works. So thank you very, very much for watching. Feel free to share this lesson with anyone you want. It's free and uh, the goal here is to have fun and play guitar. So um, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thank you, thank you, thank you and Merry Christmas. Bye for now.